Hello YouTube, thanks for joining me. In this video, we will set up our brand new Raspberry Pi 3. So this is the board, and this is all the Pi actually ships with. There's no power supply, so if you don't have a power supply, you'll need to buy this separately. Lucky for us, we have our trusty little iPhone power block, and all you need is a micro USB to USB cable. And then this is the power supply I'll be using. See the micro USB, which goes into the Pi. And then this is our 32 gigabyte micro SD card. All this recommended is about six gigs. This is overkill, at least for our purposes. And we have a keyboard, mouse, and the display we'll, we will be using. Let's continue by downloading the operating system we will be using and preparing our micro SD card for installation. So in this tutorial, we will be using Raspbian. It is a light version of Linux, and it is recommended by the developers to run on the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our micro SD card for installation. So right click on the Windows and go to Disk Management. And Disk 1 is our removable SD drive. So we're going to go ahead and right click and delete the volume. I am not sure if anything's on here but make sure you have everything off it. You don't want to delete any of your files. And then we're going to go ahead and click on Raspbian. I'm on the raspberrypi.org website slash downloads. And we're going to download Raspbian Jesse, which is a full desktop image of Raspbian. And then next we're going to download a tool called Win32. So go ahead and click on installation guide and then scroll down to the bottom of the page. And we were installing from Windows. And then if we go to the Source Forge project page, we can download the tool directly from here. And this is a tool for writing operating system images to USB sticks, or in our case, our micro SD card. So this will take a bit to download, and I'll be back as soon as everything is ready to install. All right, so everything's done. We're gonna go ahead and unzip the ISO file, and we're gonna go ahead and unzip it to the desktop, hit okay. And I already downloaded it, as you can see, so I'm just gonna replace it. All right, and once that's complete, we can proceed with installing Win32. So go ahead and next, accept the agreement, next, 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 install. You don't need to see the README, but it may not launch for you. Yes, it's gonna report an error, but that's okay. If we go to our desktop, we can go ahead and open it from there. And it's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you select the right device. We are using device E, and then open up the ISO file, raspbian jesse And then go ahead and hit write. And then once the writing process has finished, we can go ahead and eject the SD card from our laptop, and then we'll be all set to start up the Raspberry Pi. So before we actually power on our Pi, we wanna make sure and connect all the necessary peripherals we will need to be able to use it. So I'm gonna start by putting in the micro SD card. This is what we'll use for storage and it'll be the operating system. Then I'm gonna plug in my USB keyboard and then my USB mouse. And then this is our power supply. And then last but not least, our monitor. And I love the Raspberry Pi 3 because it has an HDMI out, which is awesome. All right, and this is our first boot up. So this is what it should look like on your end. And then it shouldn't take long to boot into the desktop. And then we're all set to go. 
So I'd like to point out a few things to start. This is the volume. You may want to turn it down a bit. You don't want to blow out your ears. And then this is for the Wi-Fi. The Raspberry Pi 3 has a Wi-Fi adapter and a Bluetooth adapter built in. So it hasn't quite discovered our network yet. But then if we go over to the menu, or here, this is terminal. This is a shortcut for terminal if you want to use command line. And then if we go over to the menu, Raspbian comes preloaded with development tools, office, an internet browser, a couple games, and Wi-Fi still not detecting. But then right here, this is the CPU monitor. So this is the percentage of the CPU that's being used at any given time as a percentage. And then we can actually position our menus at the bottom of the screen so it's more like Windows. And now we can connect to Wi-Fi. So thank you for taking the time to watch this. Please leave a like if you found this helpful. If you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.